can you share some of your uh, failure stories with us and how you applied uh, the lessons you have learned from those uh, failures within your personal and business life? Sure. Uh, for me, learning from failure is like practically a religion because in my back from my, my grad school days and my academic years, that was the type of machine learning we did, it was learning from failure. Uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's a big tradition within AI. And um, so academically, I was already predisposed to that. I had already been thinking for years about uh, setting expectations, running a plan, seeing how your plan met or didn't meet expectations. And when it didn't, then you, you go back and you repair your plan. So I'd already done five years of you know, PhD research on this and, and been thinking a lot about this. But of course, it's, it's nothing in comparison to the actual real world. So one of the things that comes to mind in this was where I felt like I was in the middle of a massive failure and how sometimes failures can be stepping stones to what ultimately becomes something of a much bigger success. And, and here's a quick story on that. Um, in 2003, we had gone through a flat revenue period after 9-11. It was a very tough time for technology companies. And uh, we were flat. We were losing money. We had some money in the bank, not a ton. And, uh, and I felt like we just weren't going to organically grow and innovate our way out of this. So, uh, so I brought my partners in. As I remember, it was a super dark, you know, it was December 2012. Those days were super short, and it was a very grim time. And I said, you know, I don't think we're gonna, you know, I don't think we're gonna grow away out of this. I think we gotta think of something different. Uh, and so I know this sounds crazy, but I think we might want to do an acquisition or a merger um, to get some more scale. Um, because even though we're hurting as a company, uh, I bet there's other people out there that are hurting worse. So I went out there and I looked for six months and I found one, and it was a company called Open Market that was one of our competitors for years. When I say competitor, we were the ankle biter. They were the giant. They went public. They had a market cap of billion dollars plus. They had raised uh, three, over three hundred million dollars, and uh, and they had gone bankrupt uh, in the in the context of a of acquiring a company called Divine. So I was going up to Boston, where the where the bankruptcy proceedings was ha was happening. There was a big, complicated bid, forty eight hours, no, no sleep, straight through the night where component bidders were trying to carve up this company into bankruptcy. And I had my, this competitor that I could buy um, in this bankruptcy for a you know, reasonable, ultimately we bought it for six and a half million dollars, but for a reasonable amount of money, given how much money went into it, how many customers they had. And so it was so close. But of course, not only had I I'd never done, I'd never been involved in any type of bankruptcy on either side. Uh, I've never done an acquisition. I was completely <laughs> unqualified. To, to come out there with, with a winning bid. Uh, but, you know, I had the, whatever, the gumption to go and do it. Uh, there was a point at which I felt I had completely blew it. I had a, uh, a lawyer uh, who was part of the bankruptcy proceedings working for us that I felt uh, had embarrassed me, feuding with one of my uh, other component bidders. And was, and was threatening to actually blow up the entire bankruptcy proceeding. It was, it was dramatic. I mean, it was in the bankruptcy court. You had the bankruptcy judge there. And my guy is feuding, without my authorization or knowledge, with my other component bidder. And the, and the judge is, is saying, you know what, if you guys don't get your act together, uh, we're going to start this from, completely from scratch. And, and the, <laughs> the entire courtroom of like, you know, all these high played you know, deal guys and lawyers looks at me and I'm like, you know, I'm just trying to be, become invisible. So the next day, we had, you know, we had the, the bankruptcy proceedings, uh, you know, continue the next day. So, uh, so I'm taking my, taking the cab, cab to the shuttle and I was feeling terrible, absolutely terrible. And so the cab driver I had, you, this is a remarkable story, his name was Moses of all things. And, uh, you know, he was an immigrant, for, I don't know where from spoke with a heavy accent and so he starts talking to me so here I am I'm on the verge of tears you know blowing this whole thing and then he gives me a pep talk on the way from the Tip O'Neill building to get the shuttle and and I went from completely failed to I was gonna make this thing work partially because I had this moment of grace with this uh, wonderful cab driver named Moses who I never of course would run into again in my life so in that case you had an example where 
you know, failure a lot of times is a feeling. It's like you feel terrible, you feel like you're blowing it. You know, ultimately I didn't blow it. We did come out with the deal at the end of the day by being persistent. And um, sometimes, you know, you just have to be able to gut through that initial failure.